well, that should be pretty easy as opposed to the 15 and 30 that we played last year. So, you know, I guess having a little bit of experience with uh, playing this type of schedule based on our COVID last year. Um, yeah, you just got, I mean, a lot of it's going to be mental preparation. And, you know, it starts with a game and a team that just flat out put it on us last game and one of our more disappointing efforts of the year. So, you know, we got to bounce back, you know, hopefully go out there, play 40 minutes consistent basketball, give ourselves a chance. I do not have COVID, by the way. I've tested three times in the last four days. And, uh, yeah, so I've just got a viral infection that I'm battling right now. So, yeah, hopefully today I'll start turning the corner a little bit. Well, if you're a competitor, if you're a competitor, you're going to bounce back and, and go out and do everything you can to reverse what happened the last time we played. Um, you know, it was a matchup after a bunch of string of close games, and uh, we did not come out and compete to the level that we needed to to be in a Big Ten game and a team that puts you in a different type of situation based on the players that we've been playing. We've been playing more low post uh, type players. They have, you know, with their first unit, uh, spread five that's, that can really put you in a difficult position. We did not compete into the ball and our ball screen defense. Our ball pressure was, was very poor. Um, you know, they were just way too comfortable, hit 10 threes in the first half, and, um, you know, it just spiraled downhill. We tried three different coverages in the pick and roll. None of them worked because we didn't give enough effort. If you don't give effort, it doesn't matter what your coverage is, what your schemes are, uh, you're not going to have a chance to be successful. Well, you know, t two of my kids were born there, um, my twins, and I have great memories of Chicago, first as a player. Um, you know, back when I kind of established myself as a uh, rotation player in the league, so I have great memories of that opportunity after my first four years in Chicago where I was mostly a bench guy, didn't play a lot of minutes, uh, to be able to go to Chicago and be in a position where I was a captain, um, you know, in a leadership-type position helped me immensely. In my uh, in my development as a player, uh, you know, as far as my f three plus years as a coach, um, you know, I'm very thankful for the opportunity. You know, I'm proud of some of the things that we accomplished, specifically with a young team that um, uh, you know played as well as any in the league, especially the Eastern Conference, with one of the youngest teams in NBA history over about a two month stretch. Uh, you know, when we knew we weren't going to make the playoffs. Uh, we really started to play, <clears throat> excuse me, our young players. And, uh, you know, we battled every night. You know, year we made the playoffs, we were picked 11th. That year in the East, <clears throat> had Rondo not broke his thumb, you know, we were on our way to, we were playing as well as any team in the league at that stretch. We won 10 of 11 uh, at the end of the year. And then Rondo pretty much had his way in the first two wins on the road against the Celtics. So, you know, had he stayed healthy, I think we had a great chance to win that series and continue on. Uh, but it didn't happen. And, you know, when he got hurt, that took away our advantage in that series. But, you know, I've got great memories. My daughter lives there. Um, you know, I'm going to hopefully see her tonight based on how I'm feeling. But, uh, yeah, Chicago, I'll always have great memories there. Everybody else is doing pretty good. Yeah, I've got enough to let carry for the whole team. Well, you, you learn a lot. I mean, you're going up against the greatest minds, obviously, in the game. And, uh, you know, again, it was it was just a, a, a very good experience f for me. Uh, you know, we dealt with a lot. We led the league in injuries that first year, which is not a category you want to lead the league in. And, you know, we're still right there at the end. Missed the playoffs by a game. Uh, that second year, like I said, we were not picked as a playoff team. Uh, ended up getting in there and, and, you know, based on circumstance, what I talked about, you know, just uh, couldn't quite get over the hump. And then when we went to the rebuild, <clears throat> you know, good opportunity to coach younger players. And uh, it was fun. It was a really fun team to coach. And, uh, yeah, it's every stop you have, every experience you have, you try to learn from, you try to get better from. And, you know, those years in Chicago were very beneficial in that area. Well, again, again, you just you, what, what all you can do as a coach and as a player is focus on the task at hand, and you know everything that goes on outside. You just try to block it out as best you can, and you know just stay focused on what you try to do with your team to get better 
you know, for right now, try to finish out the season playing the right way and uh, hopefully giving ourselves a chance to win. But, you know, in Chicago, you know, playing there, first of all, on a team after the dynasty, you know, this is really before, I guess, social media was where it is right now. But, you know, based on social media, <clears throat> you know, you just have to try to block out as best you can and focus on what you need to do with your team. You know, I, I've never really been part of anything, I guess, like that. So it's a good question, Robin. It's probably something we all need to think about, um, you know, as, as far as going through that moment. You know, last year, COVID, we waved. <laughs> NBA, you just kind of dipped your cap and walked off the floor. Um, you know, you just hope something like that doesn't happen. I haven't seen too much of it to comment on it specifically. I spent a lot of day in bed yesterday. and But obviously, I, you see it, and, you, you know, you come in, you talk about it. But... Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, see what happens. I mean, obviously, it's in the hands of the Big Ten right now, and, and we'll see see how it transpires. How do you, how do you game plan while you're on bed? Watch, I had my computer with me, Jimmy. That's the great thing about technology today is you can still have it right there. Um, you know, did watch some of the, um, um, you know, the Ohio State game. Was that the day before? Yeah. yeah, you know, the day before. I actually I I was not in practice yesterday. I came in and spoke to the team. And then, you know, try to get back and get as much rest. This thing hit me the day before uh, our game the other night. It's just kind of progressively gotten worse. But once again, I have COVID tested every day. And I have not tested positive. I tested for the flu. I do not have the flu. Uh, it's just a viral infection that our team doctor said would probably last about a week. So just being real careful about being around <clears throat> the guys right now. He thinks today hopefully will be a turning point and I'll start feeling better tomorrow. I mean, our, our assistants are going to have to probably the majority of that. We've got our hand signals, so that's pretty much going to be my communication. Obviously, they're not going to be able to hear me on the road, so you know, we'll meet about that. Uh, I've already talked to my assistants about it. They did a great job handling practice uh, yesterday, and then you know, again today, I was more involved, but you know, pretty much on the side. Again, I just really got to be careful being around the guys too much. I don't know. We'll, we'll, it's happened to me once. It happened to me one time in Chicago, uh, you know, pretty similar, actually, to what I'm going through now. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coach tomorrow. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, I guess we'll cross that bridge, Robin, if we, if we ever have to get there. You mentioned it today. You mentioned blocking out the noise before. How do you, how do you explain that to players and try to help them with that? Because, you know, they're on their yeah, it's hard. I mean, they're so attached to those things. I wish they weren't. I think it'd be, life would be a lot easier if, uh, if you didn't have all that. Right there, um, you know, you just have to do the best job you can because if you let it consume your life, it will. It's depressing. It's hard. You know, it, I can't imagine playing in today's game what these guys have to deal with, especially when things aren't going well. But, you know, when things are going well, it's the opposite. And, you know, people are cheering you on. Uh, you know, people are positive. But, you know, certainly the flip side is very difficult. It's hard to deal with in today's Society. I said this when social media started that eventually social media is going to be the end of us, and I still truly believe that this day. Thanks, guys.